teenagers to a, a good camp and have a good time for the weekend, so we're glad for that. You see behind me and in front of you uh, a counter. This is actually a live counter of the current world population, 8,027,908,298, it just keeps on going. Then you see uh, the numbers to the right here, uh, the birth count and, and the death count. As, as, thank you, Bart, for doing that. Uh, you see the birth count there, 38,663,000. That was uh, this year, this year so far. And then the death count, 19,375,775 and 76, it just keeps going up. And so think with me about the world population, 8 billion people on the face of this earth. Now, oftentimes we, we sort of like to categorize people, you know, and these are Americans, or these are Japanese, or uh, these are you know, Chicanos, these are you know, Mexicans, or these are whatever. Uh, and so uh, today I want to preach to you on four kinds of people, and as, as Bart puts the uh, uh, PowerPoint up on the screen, maybe you won't see it, you know. But uh, think with me, God puts people in different categories than you and I would put people in categories. I want to turn your Bibles to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. We'll read here these verses, and then we'll get to the PowerPoint in just a, a minute or two. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, we'll start in verse 12. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 12, the Apostle Paul is writing to the church at Corinth. He says in verse 12, starting, if you follow along, Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Now the, ne the next verse, verse 13. Which things also we speak, not in the, in the words which man's wisdom teaches, uh, but that which the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Verse 14, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Now, follow me on into chapter 3, the first three verses. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto you were not able to bear it. Neither yet now are you able. One last verse. For you are yet carnal, for, for whereas there is among you envy and strife and divisions, are you not carnal and walk as men? Let's have prayer before we proceed farther. Well, thank you for the day, and thank you, Father, for the, the privilege you've given to us to gather together uh, on this Lord's Day to honor and glorify you. Thank you, Father, already uh, for the fellowship we've had together with God's people. Lord, what a blessing it is to fellowship with the people that uh, know Christ as their Savior and the Lord of their lives. And Father, we realize we're not perfect here today. But we, we serve a, a risen and a perfect Savior. We're thankful for that. Thank you, Father, for the Word of God also. Bless in a very special way as we walk through these verses you laid upon uh, my heart to share this day uh, with these, uh, your people, for your honor and for your glory. I pray also, Lord, for Tony and Kristen and uh, the others, the other uh, chaperones who are with them. Bless them as they travel back today. Give them safety as they travel here at the Moon, Ta Moon Township area. Thank you, Father, for the weekend you've given to them. Bless now as we look into your word. We ask these things in Jesus' name with thanksgiving. Amen. Ha ha. <laughs> it's, one of those, it's working now. So four kinds of people. Think with me even about the picture here uh, on, on the screen. Uh, God doesn't put people in categories, you know, like uh, concerning. I looked at this picture again this morning. Uh, he didn't put pe people in, in categories of everyone holding a, a cup in their left hand. And they're all holding a cup in their left hand. God didn't put people in, in those categories. He doesn't put people in categories of men uh, versus women or men and women. He doesn't put people in categories that you and I would uh, put people in uh, particular categories. But he does put them in four different categories. We've just read the verses here, and the, the uh, next string is a listing of the four kinds of people that live in this world. Now you think with me about the counter that we just saw on the screen. Eight billion people on the face of this earth, and every, 
every person would fit into one of these categories that the Apostle Paul is going to instruct us on today. It's either the, the natural man, the spiritual man, infants in Christ, or the fleshly carnal uh, person. The natural man listed in 1 Corinthians 2, verse 14. Look at that verse again. The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. And then the, the spiritual man, look at verse 15 again. Uh, but he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. Then look at 1 Corinthians 3, uh, verse 1 again. Infants in Christ. When I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as a, a, unto babes in Christ, or infants in Christ. Then look also at 1 Corinthians 3, and verse 3. Here's the carnal person. For you are yet carnal, and here, here's what characterizes them. Uh, there is envy and strife and divisions among you. Are you not carnal and walk as men? Now think with me about those four different categories. You fit into one of those categories. Are you the natural person? Have you never come to know Christ as your Savior? You know, you're here today, and uh, somebody invited you to come, maybe, and uh, you found yourself in, in a church service, you know. Uh, 18 years of my life, I was a natural person. I was an unsaved person. And everyone in this room, uh, if you've come to know Christ as your Savior, at one time or another, you were just a natural person, an unsaved, uh, unregenerate person. You did not know Christ as your Savior. And you know, maybe even life was good for you, you know. Maybe you were, were uh, successful in your career or successful uh, financially or God had given you good health or uh, a wonderful family. Uh, that's all fine, well, and good. But spiritually, you were dead. You were dead in your, in your, 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 your uh, trespasses and sins. Or you might be in the second category today, a spiritual man. Maybe you have come to know Christ as your Savior, and it may have been you know, several years ago, but you have walked with Christ. You have immersed yourself in the Word of God. You've come to church. You've sat under the teaching and preaching of the Word of God. And you've, you've exercised the gifts and the talents that God's uh, given to you. You've gone out and you've tried to witness for, uh, for Christ and maybe even uh, pass out gospel tracts. And maybe you've even had the privilege of leading someone to a saving knowledge of Christ. And you can cat be categorized as a spiritual person. Or maybe, still yet today, you're an infant in Christ. You say, I just, I just got saved last week, or I just got saved, you know, a month ago, or two months ago, you know, six months ago. Well, if you're an infant in Christ, that, that's a good thing. That's a wonderful thing. You, you're born again, and, and you trust in Christ, and you need to grow. You need to grow spiritually. Keep, keep reading the Word of God. Keep praying. Keep coming to church, and do those things that God uh, directs you to, uh, to do so. Or you might be in the fourth category, just a fleshly, carnal person. You're saved. There was one time, you know, back, back in 1955, you know, you trusted Jesus as your Savior. And, you know, yeah, you go to church and, you know, Christmas and Easter is good for you. You tell the difference between uh, this Sunday and last Sunday. Well, last Sunday, you had, what, 117? <laughs> you, you're sitting on each other's laps last Sunday. You know, you, you have room here, here today. Uh, and that's the difference between people who are fleshly and carnal. They don't see the difference. They don't see the need. Ah, I come once or once or twice a you know, once or twice a month, you know. You know, like one guy said to us many years ago at uh, Liberty University, he said, he said, you know, you can get too much of the stuff. <laughs> and, and Karen, I thought, you may, but you, you, uh, you haven't, you know. You, you haven't. <laughs> I'll tell you, you, you haven't. And so, it might be that today you fit into this fourth category, a fleshly carnal person. You just, you're saved, but really you haven't grown spiritually. You haven't grown spiritually. Now, let's look at the biblical characteristics of the natural man. Now, but before we do so, I want to go back here, and I want to look at verse 12, 1 Corinthians 2, verse 12. Let's, let's sort of walk through these verses and set the stage here uh, for the, the uh, natural man. Look at verse 12 again. Now we have received, look what Paul says, not the spirit of the world, not what the world bases things on, but the spirit which is of God. That's the Holy Spirit. And here's the reason why or the purpose why God's given to us the spirit, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. You know, God freely gives us things and he won't take them back. 
God freely gives to us salvation. And you don't lose that. You don't lose salvation, see. And so he freely gives to us his grace, his mercy, and his peace, and salvation in Christ. What a wonderful thing that God has given to us these things. We don't earn them. We don't have to give money for them. These are things that God has freely given to us. And then he says, verse 13, which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Now, we'll not have time to go back and look at the, the first 11 verses or so, but in, in this chapter, chapter 2, the Apostle Paul is comparing man's wisdom and God's wisdom. Oftentimes, you know, we think about man. You know, we're, we think we're, we're real smart, you know. We, we, put a, uh, we put a man on the moon, you know. Uh, we've invented medicines, and we've invented uh, medical procedures, and we've invented so on and so forth. We think we're pretty smart. No, God doesn't come to us with man's wisdom. He comes to us with his wisdom, and the wisdom that he gives us comes from the Holy Spirit. And the only, the only way you can have the Holy Spirit is to be born again into God's family by the power of the Holy Spirit. Look at verse 13 again. Verse 13 again, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with, with spiritual. Now, we'll not turn to the, the passage, but in, in 2 Corinthians 10 and verse 12, those who are fleshly, the Bible says, they compare themselves among themselves. And the Bible says, those who compare themselves among themselves are not wise. Now, oftentimes, as people, we compare ourselves among ourselves. You know, I'm rather a, a tall person. <laughs> Quit laughing at me. <laughs> but at the, at the Y, if I compare myself with other people at the Y, I come out short, see. But that's the way humans do. We compare ourselves among ourselves. You know, I look I look a little bit better than you do today. You know, you know, you know she, she she her hair is fancier than your hair. You know, she has a nicer dress on than you have her on. We we compare ourselves among ourselves. Paul said that's not wise. That's not wise. But the spiritual person compares spiritual things with spiritual things, and verses with verses, uh, uh, principles with principles. And so God help us to be a spiritual person. But we're, we're looking here at the natural man, biblical characteristics, uh, characteristics of the natural man. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, verse 14. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. I put on the screen here uh, three things so far about the natural man. In 1 Corinthians 2, Paul uses the word natural to refer to someone who is still in the original or sinful state, a natural person. Just, you know, you're, you're fleshly, you're born, you know, you had a mom and dad, and somehow you were born uh, of them, maybe a, a few years ago, and you're just, you know, you're just a person, you know, you, you don't really have any spiritual connection to you, uh, but you, you might be a good person, so to speak, in this world's uh, economy, or how the world measures people, you might be a, a quote, a, a good person but you're still in your sinful state. And the Greek word uh, sukikos, which means natural, can, re can be defined as animal as opposed to spiritual or animalistic or carnal, if you will. Uh, as a natural person, as an unsaved person, you just sort of do what comes, I said the word, naturally. <laughs> you just do what comes naturally, you know. You get mad sometimes because it just comes mad naturally, you know. He said, ah, oh, you know, it's the Irish in me. You know, it's not the Irish in you. It's called the sin in you. You know, that's why you get mad. You know, oh, my, my mother was a Greek. You know, it doesn't matter what your mother or father was. It's called sin, S-I-N, because it just becomes, it's, it comes naturally. You know, you might cuss a little bit, you know, but it just comes naturally. That's what the natural man does. And the natural man are those who are occupied with things of this material world to the exclusion of the things of God. When I was unsaved, I don't know, I've told you this before, but, you know, I drove my little 1966 international pickup truck on Sunday morning by churches 
I see these people out there you know, walking the, in, in the church with their Bible, you know. I thought, those, those fuddy-duddies, you know. Those, who do they think they are? They think they're better than me, you know. That's, that's just what the natural man thinks. That's what you thought. That's what I thought before we got saved. And so they compare their life with other people you know, materially or physically. Then the next thing about the, um, the uh, natural man, they, they are led by instinct rather than by the Spirit of God. You know, it's just instinctively they do what comes naturally, just by instinct. They, the fifth thing here, they intuitively choose sin over righteousness. You know, uh, we always talk about uh, when tragedies come, we talk about all oh, the goodness that's in man. Well, there can be. There can be. But boil us all down. We're just dirty, rotten sinners. Right. Boil us all down. Uh, if, if I'm given the right situation, the right circumstances, and the right frame of mind, don't be surprised. I, I could kill you because that's part of my sinful nature. That's part of my old sinful nature. And so, uh, no, I don't plan on doing that, okay? So <laughs> it's okay, okay? Don't, don't get your guns out right now, please. But, uh, you know, these are the pagans that Jesus refers to in Matthew 6, 32, who only seek after the things of the world. Hold your place there in 1 Corinthians uh, 2. Go, go back to Matthew 6. Look at, verse what, look, at, look at the verse 32, Matthew 6, 32, and what Jesus is saying here about the heathen or the Gentiles. He puts it this way in the King James. Uh, Matthew 6 and verse 32, it says, For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, or the pagans or the heathens seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. And, he, and it says in the previous verse, you know, don't, don't take any thought you know, what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, what you're going uh, you to wear. You know? Well, that's what the, the unsaved world, they're constantly thinking about, oh, what am I going to eat? What, what, what am I going to drink? Oh, yeah. What am I going to wear? You know, God said, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. Don't be like those heathen or those Gentiles or those pagans. God knows what you have need of even before you ask these things. And by the way, verse 34 says, and verse 33 says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought of the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the as the, as, the own, as the own evil thereof. You're in verse 34. If you look back over to the verse, uh, chapter 6 and verse uh, 11, it says, give us this day our daily bread. You know how we're to live as a Christian? Just day by day by day by day. Now, I would like, humanly speaking, I'd like a whole bunch of money in a bank account. I'm, yeah, I've got a hundred thousand dollars in the bank. I wish, <laughs> you know. I want to. I want to depend upon that. No, Jesus said, "You just look to me, and every day, I'll supply what you need." Just every day, I'll supply what you need. Let me ask you: Has there ever been a day you've lived that you haven't had what you needed in your life? You look back in your life. You race back through your life in your in your memory. You say, well, back, you know, April the, April the 19th, you know, 1971, you know, I, I didn't have much. No, you, you can't say that. Because every day, God has supplied what you needed. And you know what he'll do tomorrow? He'll supply what you need. And you know what he'll do next week? He'll supply what you need. So God doesn't say, give us this week, you know, our, our week's provision. Or give us this month, you know, what we need. No, give us this day our daily bread, and I'll give you tomorrow what you need. We don't like to live like that. We like to see what's ahead. But God says, you don't, you don't walk that way. We walk by faith, not by sight. Now, I know we have a, a few rental houses we rent out, and I said to Karen one day, I said, I said what's the address of such and such house? And she said, 722. I said, well, that's what we got in the bank, $7.22. <laughs> I 
and we don't have bills to pay. You don't have any money to pay the rent, you know, uh, pay the payment for the next, next month, but you know, somehow God will provide more need, you know. And he did, and he, and he did, and he does. And he continues to do exactly what he said he, do, he does. Give us this day our daily bread. Go back to Second, back to 1 Corinthians 2. These are like the pagans, the, the sixth thing. The, the, the pagans, Jesus refers to Matthew 6, 33, 6, 32. Then the seventh thing, the natural man perceives the things of God to be foolishness and refuses to have the thinking of Christ. Now, let me ask you, do you fit into this category? If, if you're unsaved here today, you say, you know, I've never, I, you know, I've dabbled in this thing called Christianity. I've mean, read the, a few verses along the way, but I've never really trusted Christ my Savior. If that's you, you're, you're a natural man. Now, there's nothing to be ashamed about that because at one time we were all in that category. But God doesn't want you to stay there. He wants you to be born again. Now, the next thing is a, a biblical, biblical characteristics of a spiritual man. This is the person who's been walking with Christ. Look at it here in, in verse, uh, verse uh, 15 again. Uh, uh, yeah, in verse 15. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of, mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. Now, hold your place there and look back at the same chapter. Look back at verse 9. Verse 9, oftentimes, you walk into people's houses, and, and I have this verse in, in my, my little office. Verse 9 tells us something. We said, wow, let's read verse 9. But as it is written, I hath not seen nor ear heard, e neither hath entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. We say, oh, my. Just imagine what God prepared for us. Just imagine what heaven will be like and the streets of gold and no sickness and no heartache and no sigh, no cry, no dying. Oh, just imagine. No. Look at the next verse. I'll, re I'll read verse 9 and then verse 10 together. But as is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither hath entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Don't stop there. Look at verse 10. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit, for the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. You know what God's done? He's given to us the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit says, I'll show you. I'll show you right now what I'm doing. I'll show you right now the good things I'm doing in your life, not only in your life right now, but things to come. And you are a success, and you are a whopping success right now and on into the future. Don't wait and say, oh, I can't wait for heaven. No, he's revealed those things right now. The, the, the spiritual man, on, your, on the screen you see, in contrast, the spiritual man judges all things. Now, a few years ago, yeah, 20 years ago, one of the most popular verses in America that people knew was John 3, 16. For God so loved the world, gave his only begotten Son, Whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3, 16. You know what the most popular verse is now among unsaved people? Judge not. Judge not. Judge not. Well, now, wait a minute. Either there's a contradiction or we misunderstand that verse in Matthew chapter 7. Judge not, lest you be judged. The Bible says, he that is spiritual judgeth all things. You know that verse, you know that, you know, you know that word means he discerns all things. He evaluates all things. He examines all things. Um, like this, this clicker. If I were a scientist, I'd pick this up and I would examine this. That means I would judge this thing. I say, I would discern this thing. I would evaluate this thing. I'd say, what is this? And I'd figure this thing out. I would examine it. 
the spiritual person examines everything in light of the word of God. That, that's what it means. He judges all things. He discerns all things. He examines all things. He evaluates all things. He discerns all things. Now, that verse back in Matthew chapter 7, don't judge uh, wrongly. Don't judge wrongly. You can judge scripturally. Now, I, I'm not, I'm not going to be thrown out of here because <laughs> I'm not the pastor anymore. <laughs> But I can, make, I, can make, I, can make a, I can make a spiritual judgment today. I don't know. I don't know this as a fact. Let me tell you this. If a man and woman is living together and they're not married, that's wrong. No, it's wrong. <laughs> you say, well, you're judging. You're right. I'm judging. You know, you know how I'm judging? Because the Word of God says. That's called immorality. Yeah. And, 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 and if two men are living together and they are in a sexual relationship together, that's sin. And that's judging. That's making a, a discernment. You know, how, you know how I do that? Because that's what the Bible says. See? That's what the Bible says. And so the spiritual man judges or discerns all things, look, other characteristics here. That is, he is able to discern, the second thing here, he's able to discern uh, or evaluate properly the things of God because they are spiritually perceived or understood. Now, I know, uh, I probably told you this before, but when I was an unsaved kid in high school, I had to write a, a paper on uh, capital punishment. Now, I, I said, I, I remember that paper. I wrote, oh, ter it's terrible, capital punishment. Terrible, terrible. Why should we kill a, a person who you know, kills another man? Then I got saved and I read the Bible. And the Bible says, whoso sheds man's blood by man shall his blood be shed too. I had to change my thinking about that. And the spiritual person discerns or evaluates spiritually how those things are perceived or understood. The third thing here is this. The ingredient that the natural man is missing is the, and the spirit of man has is the mind of Christ. 1 Corinthians 2, 16. Look at verse 16. For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But the last few verses here, the last few words here. But we have the mind of Christ. Now, uh, positionally, we all have the mind of Christ because we're a new creature in Christ. But practically and experientially, uh, it, it, you and I let his thinking flow through us. Help me here. Philippians chapter 2 says this. Let this mind be in you. Let this mind be in you. Yeah, that's talking about the, the humbleness of Christ. Let this mind be in you. We, we invite the Holy Spirit's working in our life and say, Lord, work through my thinking, change my thinking, that my thinking would be in accordance to your word. Uh, the fourth thing here is the mature believer in Christ, mature believer in Christ is a spiritual man made alive and possessing a new way of thinking. We have a little, little magnet on, our, on our, our refrigerator and it says this, change your attitude and you can change your life. I want to add to that. Change your thinking, and you can change your life. You know, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And the spiritual man judges all things because he now has the mind of Christ. If you are walking with Christ, and you are uh, bowing to His lordship and His leadership, you have the mind of Christ. You can have the thinking of how Christ understands and perceives this world. You can have that same thing. It says we have the mind of Christ. Now, there's the natural man, there's the spiritual man. We need to hurry along here. Uh, here here's the infants in Christ. Here's the, the third category of people. Do you fit in the first one, the natural category, or the second one, the spiritual category? Or maybe you fit in this third category of people. Four kinds of people in this world. Uh, and the, the, the third one is, are the infants in Christ. And the infants in Christ, 1 Corinthians 3, verse 1. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto, here it is, babes in Christ or infants in Christ. Now, 
new, newborn babies. So they, they're, they're so precious, you know. There's a newborn baby. You, you hold her in your arms, and they goo, and you know, they, sometimes they split up, and they do, they do other things, you know, uh, out, out both ends, <laughs> you know. You know. But they're, they're so precious, you know. They're so innocent. But boy, they, they, if they get mad, oh, they can throw a temper tantrum and stiffen their, their body. Now, Corrine, I remember when Billy was just a baby. I mean, remember, and, and you tried to put, it, put him, you tried to put him in, in, a, in a, that sleeper thing, you know, where his feet and fit in. And, you know, he did not want to go in there, and man, he, he screamed bloody murder, you know. Don't put me in that thing. That, that's just the way infants are. That, that's what they do, you know. They scream, they holler. And uh, so they, they, they've just come to know Christ as their Savior, and now only beginning to learn about the things of God and infant in Christ. And consequently, they might look like a fleshly person at times, but utilize the mind of Christ uh, in their own thinking. Think with me. A newly born again person is an infant in Christ. And the fourth thing here, you can't, you can't expect them to act mature because infants are expected to behave like infants because that's what they are, you know. You put a little baby in a bassinet, you don't, you don't, you know, you don't throw a stake in there with him, you know. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. And, you know, here, you know, have, a, have a Big Mac. Yeah. It, you know, it doesn't work that way, you know. You give them, you know, uh, milk and, you know, liquid stuff and everything. But you can't expect them to act like an adult because they're not an adult. And infants in Christ, it takes time for them to grow spiritually. Now, if you're newly born again, God bless you. God bless you. Don't, don't, don't say, uh, let's study the Bible. Let, let's study Revelation. No, no, that, you don't do that. Because, because you have not, you've not gone past the milk of the word, the, the, the easy things of the word of God. You need to study out the elementary things of the Word of God, and then you can go on to the uh, meat of the Word of God. And so the fifth thing here, while the infant has been newly born and has a new spirit, he has not yet learned to judge all things, nor uh, to use the thinking of Christ that now belongs to him. They will in time if they grow spiritually, if they grow spiritually. However, sad to say, There are Christians that are carnal, carnal people. Look at 1 Corinthians 3, verses 1, 2, and 3 again. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. Then he goes on in verse 2 and verse 3. I fed you with milk, not with meat. Now, before I read on, these are people in the Corinthian church. These are Christians in this local assembly. Now, I don't know how long they've been saved, but look what the Apostle Paul says. I fed you with milk, not with meat. And why, did, why didn't he feed them the weighty things of the, word, of the Word of God? For hitherto, up to this point, you're not able to bear it. Neither yet now are you able. For you, for you, you are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envy and strife and divisions, are you not carnal and walk as men? I passed through the church one time. We couldn't understand why people wouldn't come to church. We'd knock on doors around the neighborhood. The neighbors wouldn't come. They wouldn't come. We got to find out why they wouldn't come. Because a few years before we came, the people in the church, in the church, in the church, were having a business meeting. They began arguing in the business meeting. Not only did they argue in the business meeting, they, they started popping. <laughs> They not only started, you know, arguing in the business meeting, but then they, then they began to rumble with each other in the church and spilled out onto the sidewalk of the church and into the street 
and the unsaved neighbors called the cops on the church people. I think they were carnal. There was envy and strife and divisions among them. They said, oh, God bless you. God bless you, dear brothers and sisters. <laughs> no, no, they needed to repent. They didn't, they didn't, you know, need to turn back and follow the Lord. But they were carnal. So, 1 Corinthians 3.3, 3, they often act like an infant, only without the building excuse. <laughs> they, they have no excuse. Now, if you're here today and you're carnal, shame on you. You need to grow. You need to grow spiritually. You need to read the Word of God. You need to pray. You need to humble yourself. The fleshly person, the carnal person, has not grown as he should have. I remember years ago I preached on on the, the uh, millennial reign of Christ. Jesus is going to reign for a thousand years. And one lady walked up to me after the service. And she said, do you mean it's going to rain for a thousand years? <laughs> I, no, that's, that's not what I said, lady. <laughs> no, R-E-I-G-N, not R-A-I-N. But she had, she had no idea. Because she would not read about the millennial reign of Christ. She was carnal. He should, he should have moved on past infancy and grew to maturity, but his growth has been stunted. Now, some people say that about me, you know, physically, but <laughs> it is what it is. But spiritually, if you're, if you're stunted, there's something wrong with you. Something wrong in the process of growing spiritually. It's just like a garden... It's either in the soil or the, the plant itself, or it's not getting the sunshine, it's not getting the water. Something's wrong, you know, that that plant's not growing. Well, if you're not growing spiritually, something is wrong. Figure out what's wrong and correct the situation. You know, the Bible says in James, you know, we, we go, we look at look in a mirror. You know why you, know why you look in a mirror? So you can change your appearance. Some of you, some of you, when you wake up, you, you, you look like you put your finger in an electric socket, you know. You know, well, you look in the mirror and, and you, you fix things. Well, the Bible says, whoso looks into the perfect law of liberty, you know, and continues therein, he's not only a hearer of the word, but he's a doer uh, of the word. And so you and I, if, we're, if we find ourselves in a carnal position, you need to change. You need to make some corrections. Don't say, well, you know. It's, it's the preacher's fault. You know, they're not feeding us. You know, we're just not, that church is not feeding us. Yeah. When you go to Eden Park, you expect the waitress to feed you? Here, here, honey, take another bite. You know, here, here's a bite of steak. Now, here, here, I'll feed it to you. No, you learn how to feed yourself. How to feed yourself. And so don't be carnal. If you're here today and you say, I, I sort of fit in that category. Well, then you need, to, you need to grow up. You know, you need to grow up. And then the fourth thing is this. Uh, Paul chastises the Corinthians because they are thinking and behaving like fleshly people when they should be thinking like spiritual man who judges or discerns all things. Don't, you know, don't walk away and say, yeah, you know, what, you know what she said to me? You know what he said to me? Well, it's irrelevant what people say to you. Put your eyes on Jesus. David said in Psalm 16, 8, and that's the verse downstairs on that little plaque. By the way, that's my hall. When you go into my hall, <laughs> make sure you behave in my hall. Okay. <laughs> Psalm 16, 8. The Lord has set before me always because he's at my right side. And the next verse is, and my heart is glad. My heart is glad. You know, you know how you have a glad heart? By putting Jesus always before you. By putting Jesus always before you. They were walking like mere men rather than like those who, 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 who have the mind of Christ. And this immaturity, immaturity was inexcusable and showed up in their thinking and behavior. It always will show up in behavior. At that same church I told you about, I had a business meeting. The guy had a briefcase. He got upset. Now, now, for the life of me, I don't know why people get so upset with me. It just, it's just beyond me. <laughs> but he got upset. 
He took that briefcase, he banged it on the floor, and got up and walked out. Well, that's immaturity. That's childish. That's wrong. Now, if you listen to me, I'm trying to help you so you don't make a fool of yourself. Don't, don't be dumb in how you act. Be wise. Be spiritual. Here's the conclusion. When we believe in Jesus, we're born again and can now think as God has designed us to think. Think about that statement. God has designed you to think spiritually. And by the way, life is much more spiritual than it is physical, financial, material, sexual, psychological, whatever. Life is spiritual. And in the strictest sense of the word, life is more spiritual than you realize. Because God is always working behind the scenes to make you what he wants you to be and put you in the place he wants you to be. Always spiritually. You think about uh, Daniel. Daniel wasn't carted away from Jerusalem to Babylon just because God hadn't, didn't have anything, anything better to do. No. God had a plan for Daniel. And the plan was to be fulfilled in Babylon. God had a plan for Joseph. You know, it looked like looked like a terrible thing. And Joseph even said at the end of his life, you meant it for, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. And so think the way God has designed you to think. And we're no longer natural people whose spirit is not alive. We should move on past immaturities of infancy and press on to maturity. We ought to think and act like spiritual people because that is what we are. So you're either a natural man a spiritual man, an infant in Christ, or a carnal person. Let's stand together. My Lord, thank you for this day, and thank you for allowing us to gather together and look into your word. Lord, of all the eight billion people on the face of this earth, you put us into four categories either a natural, unsaved person, a spiritual person who's walking with you, an infant in Christ, newly born again, and learning about you, or else a, a born-again person who's just walking by their fleshly instincts. Lord, help us to be that spiritual person that would love you, read your word, ponder your word, meditate upon your word, apply your principles to our hearts and lives. And Lord, we would be a blessing spiritually to other people. We'd be that catalyst and that person that would impact and influence others for the cause of Christ. And when life is over and we're in your presence, and they stand around our casket, so to speak. They can say, that person blessed my life spiritually. But that person walked with Christ. That person loved Jesus. That person influenced me to follow Jesus better. Lord, may that be our testimony. Not just at the end of our life, but right now, today. April the 16th, 2023. And Lord, for anyone that is not saved here today, may today be their day of salvation. If anyone needs to just renew their walk, renew their fellowship with God, may they do so at this invitational time. For your glory and for your honor, may we make decisions we'll be glad we made when we stand before your presence. We ask these things now in Jesus' name. Amen. Mark? Feel free.